Mr. Vio, with the, the FIKI chairman, just a mention of Biocon. Numbers have come out. Uh, it has seen good contribution from Sinjin, and that's the management of Biocon, Kiran Marasundar Shaw. But it has increased its uh, expenditure as far as R&D goes, and that has taken a bit of an impact. Uh, the stock is down half a percentage point, and this is the second quarter, of course, that we've seen a contribution from Sinjin uh, on t in terms of the numbers. Uh, so we'll get some commentary in terms of how that has panned out and almost a 50-odd percent increase is what we've seen in terms of spends on R&D. So that has had an impact on uh, the numbers. But uh, the outlook will be crucial to watch for. They will also have uh, a, a lot of uh, 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 products in the pipeline that uh, we will uh, get some clarity on if the uh, management is able to share any news on that. But that's uh, the management of uh, Bicon uh, talking about the quarter that's gone by and very quickly before she just starts talking. This for our viewers, a sense of how the numbers have been this quarter. Revenues up 8.8%, net profit up 13%, EBITDA is up 18.4%, EBITDA margins coming in at 21.7% uh, versus 20%. So there's been an expansion in EBITDA margins. R&D uh, expenses have of course gone up. Biopharma vertical has grown uh, 3% and branded formula Relations, India sales and India is of course a challenge that uh, Kiran Mazumdar Shah has been speaking about in terms of the India business that has remained absolutely flat at 104 crores. Sinjin meanwhile like, is 23% higher uh, but listening to Kiran Mazumdar Shah. Uh, call from uh, Biocon. I'd like to share with you a very strong performance by the Biocon group uh, this quarter uh, especially with reference to quality of earnings. Uh, we have grown uh, uh, in terms of uh, this quarter uh, at, at a uh, bottom line of 13% to 103 crores. Uh, our top line has grown uh, by 10% from 779 crores last fiscal to 857 crores this fiscal. Um, at, in terms of uh, PAT margins, uh, it is uh, at 12%. EBITDA has grown significantly. It has grown 23% from 170 crores to 209 crores. Um, when it comes to Sinjin's contribution to Biocon numbers, uh, we have recognized 270 crores at the, at the top line, which is a 23% year-on-year growth. And at a bottom line, it is uh, 45 crores. Uh, so you can see that uh, Biocon's numbers, uh, excluding Sinjin's numbers, have grown significantly. Uh, EBITDA itself has grown uh, significantly by 27% uh, year on year. Uh, we have actually realized uh, a much better quality of earnings this quarter, largely propelled by uh, sales of uh, our uh, immunosuppressants and insulins and biosimilars in uh, various emerging markets. Uh, it has also been uh, propelled by very strong licensing income where we have actually licensed uh, a large number of our biosimilar programs in various key emerging markets. And uh, I think uh, what is important for me to highlight this quarter is the fact that uh, uh, four of our uh, key uh, biosimilar programs are coming to the finishing line and uh, we expect to file all these four biosimilars in U.S. and European, uh, you know, uh, with the U.S. and European regulators uh, during this calendar year. This is a very important inflection point for Biocon, given these very, very interesting and exciting developments. So overall, I would say that we have had a very, very strong and encouraging quarter. This is on, on, on the back of very high spends in R&D. R&D spends have gone up by 45% this quarter uh, from, uh, to about uh, 68 crores. And if you look at our uh, uh, tax uh, that we have uh, incurred this quarter, it is also significantly up by uh, almost 14 crores. So I think if you look at this performance that you would li that you should look at in terms of biopharma sales, we have actually had a very strong uh, performance this quarter, and the R and D spends, the increased R and D spends, of course, reflect very strongly on our rapidly, uh, you know, developing clinical endpoints for our bi key biosimilar programs, which really sets us 
up for these regulatory filings which are going to be very key to biocon's uh, uh, you know uh, early mover play in the biosimilars market uh, when the markets are then available to us the addressable biosimilars market of just these four programs is 30 billion dollars and as i mentioned biocon is one of the Uh, uh, you know, amongst the first wave of entrants into the biosimilars market, and along with our partners, Mylan, we believe that we will be considered amongst dominant players in the biosimilars marketplace. So, with that, uh, I think it's 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 uh, it's a very very uh, interesting time for Biocon. It's a very exciting time for Biocon. We also have uh, basically uh, mentioned that uh, two of our novel programs are also very, very looking very good. Uh, our insulin trego pill or oral insulin program have, has provided us with very, very important positive readouts, uh, and these uh, this particular program will now be advanced by Biocon. Uh, in the clinic through a, a larger clinical uh, set of trials uh, which will validate these early findings which will make it then a very very important and valuable asset uh, for biocon uh, where we will look at various options on how to develop this product for commercialization uh, in terms of uh, itolizumab uh, again uh, this is a product that has given us very good uh, safety and efficacy data in in you in, in in the marketplace in psoriasis but what we believe is that in terms of being an autoimmune molecule the infusion uh, presentation of this uh, particular drug uh, is not conducive to expanding market share we believe that we do need a sub q formulation and a sub q presentation to make a bigger uh, market uh, play of this particular program so we have just initiated Uh, very key trials uh, for a sub q formulation of itolizumab in australia uh, and once these trials are uh, concluded we believe that this will then uh, open up new opportunities both for uh, market expansion in psoriasis in india and other uh, possible markets but also then to develop this product in other key autoimmune indications uh, in terms of our global aspirations for this market you know, for this product um i would also say that uh, uh in general uh, the only ma- the only segment that uh, has had very muted performance is our branded formulations business branded formulations cross the 100 crore per quarter mark but this is something that needs to be uh, ramped up significantly and we believe that uh, uh, the product rationalization that we have already undertaken for this particular uh, branded formulations division will now be basically uh, leveraged uh, to to really propel growth in the coming quarters uh, having said that we have seen our anchor uh, products uh, you know the 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 That's Kiran Masumdar short speaking about uh, the results in Biocon and what the outlook is. The stock has been climbing up on the back of that. Markets are on a roll today. After a long time we've seen a good solid up move of 106 points on the Nifty at 7383 and this is largely owing to the fact that Asian markets have had a stellar run today and most of those markets are up anywhere between 2 to 4% in trade. So there is a relief rally that's happening and uh, that is why we are seeing the Sensex also and the Nifty up smartly gale india is the biggest